I, I think I am curious on why mm-hmm. we took so much time, given that now we have seen that data protection is such a relevant topic. Yeah. How come we took so much time <laughs> to come into it uh, I, as compared to, let's say, the, the countries in the, yeah. in the EU are better? So, or, or do we say it's Africa or are there... I mean, why? Why now? Why, <laughs> why now? now? Why now? <laughs> um, tricky question, but I imagine that um, we lag behind mm-hmm. in, in, in a couple of things in terms of um, the innovations that are taking part in the world. Yeah. And uh, we don't see the seriousness of these things <laughs> until maybe the impact us. So I think this came about when we saw the elections being manipulated using yes. data and then that's when we realized that the Cambridge data the data that things. exactly Cambridge yeah. analytic our data could be used maliciously without us knowing yes. and then now we decided we, we started looking back and saying oh how do i protect this data how mm. do i get hold of the data that i had already shared yeah. okay. so we lag behind in terms of understanding the implications of the different things that could happen if yes. we share data Hello everyone and welcome and welcome back again to Global Tech Sailors Podcast. My name is Faith Kilonzi. I'll be your host, co-host today. I'm joined by Rona Joy, who is also from Global Tech Sailors. And it's going to be such an exciting episode because we have one of the favorite people we have in this data space because we are talking data today. And... Um, let me give Rona a chance to introduce herself and just tell us how you doing. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm so happy again to just be here and um, listen to the one of the most <laughs> um, resourceful people we have in data. I am doing fine, um, Faith. Thank you for asking. You know that question is taken for granted, by the yeah. way. I'm I'm yeah. doing fine. <laughs> You're doing well. Yeah, I'm okay. doing well. <laughs> Nice, 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 nice. I'm also doing well. So maybe let's just go straight into it. Yeah. Then how are you doing? I'm doing good. I feel like just the way Rona is saying, um, it's an underrated question. Yeah. And Ish. until you are asked how mm-hmm. you're doing and then you start thinking about it is when you yeah. realize, oh, by the way, um, I am having maybe this and this and then I need to consolidate them to determine my feeling. That's yeah. True. yeah, that's true. Um, today I'm feeling good. <laughs> this uh-huh. could be a good summary. We're today. so happy to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> so happy. I'm happy Just too. A bit. I'm happy. <laughs> Just a bit of background. I think people really, uh, we keep saying one of the people we know in the data space. But, okay, so a bit of background. We've worked with Ken for, not directly, but also within the same organization for quite a bit, personally, yeah. but you guys are still working together. And it's it's... He's one of those people that when you know he's making a presentation about anything data, yes. then you have to listen. You have to listen because you know it's going to be very, very good. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't want to, I always feel like, I'll do a disservice if I introduce you for someone who is doing a lot of things. So please just introduce yourself, okay? Yeah, uh, I don't tell us who finish. Ken Buki is. <laughs> Ken Buki in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Drum rolls. <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> Anyhow. Please, Edita, um, take note. You have to put drum rolls there. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Ken Buki. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like to describe myself as a um, versatile man mm-hmm. or individual. Uh, in I do a lot in the tech space as well as outside the tech space. Yeah. So in the tech space, I really love to work with data. That's the speciality that I've specialized with. And then um, I'm extending the work that I'm doing around data uh, in the other fields that I'm um, involved in. And one of the fields that I favoritely talk about is farming. And now Ooh. I'm doing about um, drone data in farming and then now putting in the skills about um my data skills. I mean, you're farming. doing a lot. You're making us wonder okay, what are we doing with me. our lives? <laughs> <laughs> really, now it's 
I'll just say that I'm doing um, data drones, drones and farming. Farming. Hey. Mm. Oh, okay. I did say. Academia okay, yeah, I do a bit of academia. Uh-huh. I, I, more I, yes. I lecture at KCA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Part time. I lecture um, anything to do with tech. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm an author too. By the way, I've written a book. Yeah. Wow. Yes, an author. Oh yeah, yes, I remember yes, yes, you too. Yeah. yeah, yes, an author as well. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, what are you doing in your lives? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ken Buki, and it's just an honor to have you here. Thank you. I know um, we're not going to say it enough times because I mean it's not every day that you sacrifice your time to come here and share your knowledge sure. yeah and it's it's good it's good to have you great yeah. to have you and also i think it speaks to why we start this podcast we start this podcast to just channel our tech knowledge mm. um to this space and also just give our opinions while yeah. at it sure. yeah so it's also one of those things that we hope our listeners today will be able to understand what um we are talking about and also just share it with people so please if you're listening to this podcast and you've been listening to it long enough you know very well that um for this tech space you need to share it as much as possible and get more people listening to us and one of the things that we are talking about is um something that's really um been in the space for quite a bit and in Kenya specifically what inspired the topic is basically just what you need to know about data protection data mm-hmm. privacy and the data act in Kenya which is has become quite the the buzz topic yeah lately because i think a few months ago I don't know if it a month ago there were a few firms that were uh, penalized for data privacy and um data privacy issues, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Please, we might not use the right terms today, but Ken is here to, <laughs> to teach us to actually teach us. to educate so us on the right terms. Personally, I'm here to learn. <laughs> I'm here to learn and it's just one of those things. But before we start Rona, please do you have any questions for Ken? Yeah, um so I would want us to go a, a bit back a little bit mm. and just tell us a bit of your background um in career wise yeah. how you got into tech just yeah. your journey up to where you are yeah. lecturer all those things <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. please tell us I, i'll have to see if, because if i start talking about everything that i do we yes. might end up extending the, <laughs> the okay. maybe we should bring him again oh of course yeah. of course we need like 10 episodes for me <laughs> Okay, okay. Okay. Please. Let's start do the life of. Let's first do the tech thing and then we'll be able to look at the other ones. Yeah. Sure. So my I started off my career um, uh in a funny way actually. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know anything to do with tech. Mm-hmm. And then one of my aunts just asked me whether um, when we were choosing like the 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 courses to go for university. Yeah. They they asked me like, "Would you want to do this thing? I've been hearing that it's something nice and it could kind of fit with the ca- the personality that you are in mm-hmm. uh, and so i applied for computer science i was taken in for computer science chuka university congratulations uh, thank you <laughs> <laughs> so i did four years of course yeah uh, and then uh, i landed into the job market as a full stack dev yeah i Ooh. worked uh, at savannah informatics as yeah. a full stack dev oh, so big back end companies there yes back end front end and then when i was in savannah informatics is when i realized that data is becoming a thing mm-hmm. uh, because of the business and how the businesses are trying to differentiate themselves yeah uh, and then at that point i realized that if i wanted to work with data mm-hmm. i would have to gain more skills to be able to now um uh play part in in that data world yeah. and that's why i went to do my masters i went to do my masters in uk um in the university of leeds yeah. then i came back so basically that was my short journey in terms of um uh, how i got to where i am yeah. and yeah. so now when i came back um i really didn't want to stay out mm-hmm. my point was that i wanted to come back to be able to serve in the community that i've grown in yeah. and be able to make an impact in terms of uh, the skills that i've got outside uh yeah. and so when i came in oh. i looked for opportunities at first it was really hard to land a job mm-hmm. uh, because people were um, at that point um not really um aware of what is it that someone who says that is doing business intelligence mm-hmm. or uh, data analytics is doing yeah um the question that was coming was um how are you going to bring value to us 
Yeah. And at that point it was really difficult. So I ended up doing a few consultancies to be able to build a profile mm-hmm. and that's how now I got even um invited to like jobs that I didn't even apply for. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and yeah. Wow. So far so good. I've uh, been in the industry for like um seven, eight years. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm happy to 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 be here. Oh, that's that's a very rich, <laughs> heavy profile. profile. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Very inspiring. Yeah, yeah, very inspiring indeed. Mm-hmm. Um, so we will maybe go again <coughs> straight into the topic, mm. and I would want you to just briefly ex. We have been talking about data, data, mm. data. So, what is this data protection that we are talking about? Just give us educators mm. on. Yeah, what it is and yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you know when you say educate I'm feeling like I'm being taken back to the lecture hall where the students once I mean, like <laughs> anyhow. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'll I'll try and uh, give you the uh, idea of uh, where all the, the entire topic of data protection mm-hmm. came yeah. from. Mm-hmm. So one of the things you realize um is in as, in as much as you are working in the tech industry, mm-hmm. yes, we are uh in an industry uh, that uh oh yeah encompassing ourselves in a place where there is business yeah. so mm-hmm. business is what drives data that's without true. business we'll mm-hmm. not be talking about data that's yeah. true. okay that's true. and um if you begin thinking about business and um how we collect data mm-hmm. how we store data that's now how you'll be able to build the case of data protection uh, data privacy and data security yeah. so let's begin by trying to understand what business does so that you can be able to um, gain the context of protection of data yeah. so any business um right now the mm-hmm. the the industries that you are in uh, whether health um agriculture um uh, education mm-hmm. all of them are using data to be able to um either gain a competitive advantage mm-hmm. or be able to kind of differentiate themselves in yeah. terms of what they are doing yeah. and so um as we are gathering this data and standardizing our processes in terms of the tools that you are using uh, in terms of the um architecture just the general tech architecture that you are using mm-hmm. we now have to think about a couple of things who is accessing the data mm-hmm. who is using mm-hmm. the data if you want to share it maybe to be able to have collaborations with other people how is this happening yeah. and so um the first thing to think about as we talk about data protection is where the data is coming from wow. yeah. and then secondly um which people do not really um understand is what we call data governance That's so true. there are three terms here i want to demystify before we now uh, get to say what data protection is mm-hmm. yes. so we have data governance mm-hmm. we have data privacy mm-hmm. and we have data security yeah data governance is the framework of all activities that will govern an organization uh, or a business organization to say that um this is how we collect our data this is how we, where we put it this is where we are able to share it mm-hmm. so it's just the framework around governing who why what mm-hmm. that is happening in the organization yes. and it's the first point for us to be able to even um uh, have before we talk about protection uh-huh. because once we have the governance Then is where can now we can plug in okay. um how do we protect yes. that's okay yeah it's a five fold kind of a process mm-hmm. so we first of all uh, understand what we are doing mm-hmm. yeah and then we can be able to talk about protecting it yeah and preserving the privacy of if now we talk about data subjects at this point yes. how we can be able to preserve the privacy of the subjects that we are working with at that context that we are in yeah yes. right yeah so we'll maybe define and we can be able to start by defining um what 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 we call data data um, Let me start with what I have some quick notes here just to glance to make sure that I do the definition. <laughs> we love notes. We, we love notes. I carried a book. Yeah, yeah, we should have, you yeah. know. So, the the <laughs> governance we just about talked about governance. the governance. Uh-huh. Governance is the foundation of everything. Yes. Yeah. How we are able to put the right uh, measures in the organization. Yes. yes. And then the second thing is the privacy. Yeah. So the privacy comes in two folds. Yeah. We have the um, business, the data is a one of the business assets mm-hmm. that you need to protect. Yes. Okay? And in that asset is where we have the data subject yeah. who yeah. now is either an entity or a person. Yes. yes. Okay? Yeah. And then the second thing about privacy is the regulation. Yes. We are now we are mm-hmm. talking about pro- data protection act or the data protection act yeah. as a regulation that encompasses or enshrines what you need to do to be able to 
protect. Yes. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yes. Yeah. And then the last thing now is the security. So in security now you're talking about the tools. Yes. Encryptions, all that kind of things. Yeah. And and for you to be able now to make up inclusive picture of everything, mm-hmm. you need to understand those three terms and how they play part. Yeah. Wow. Please. <laughs> Episode two is loading. <laughs> and wow, <laughs> because we could actually go on and on about all these things and and just to bring it home and while we are just having this conversation is um now i want you to explain to us mm. from a business perspective yep. from an individual perspective mm. and also okay let's work with those two yep. i'm on a business i am generating data yep. or i'm a business i'm consuming data mm. and i'm an individual that my data is being used yep. Now, with everything to do with data governance, yep. bring it home. Wow. Mon- mountainous task. <laughs> <laughs> no, just okay. low level. Yeah. So let's take it from a business perspective. Yeah. Yes. And why I'm saying that is because I'm sitting at a point where I'm trying to interpret the, the value of data protection yes. in yeah. the business yeah. to be able to kind of... Um, Make, make sense mm-hmm. and, and understand why we need to adhere to it in yeah. terms of the compliance now I talked about. Yes. So one, um, as a business, you need to be able to first of all identify or understand how you're collecting data. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Once you understand how you're collecting data, um, the second thing is to understand how you will protect that data once you yes. collect it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay? Yes. The third thing is to be able to detect if there's someone trying to get access of this data uh-huh without my knowledge yeah. and that comes twofold either detect um internally someone is sharing it uh, yes. without the the right the right um um kind permissions. of permissions mm-hmm. or someone is trying to access it maliciously. where um, maliciously yeah. exactly mm-hmm. yeah. and then the last thing is to be able to understand how to respond if any of these two situations happen okay. yes. and then the last one is to respond Mm-hmm. So once I, I I am able to see uh, maybe this is happening, mm-hmm. how am I going to re- respond? respond? So yes. respond will come with something like how do I recover mm-hmm. my control over mm-hmm. this data? Yeah. So bottom line, remember that data is an asset, mm-hmm. and that is what you are protecting. Yes. Okay? So let's take for example um, a small business uh, mm-hmm. that is doing online sales. Yes. So they are gathering data about uh, people who are purchasing things. Yeah. Yes. Taking in their um, uh, maybe phone numbers, uh, date of birth. That's why you end up seeing them sending maybe birthday message. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, Are they allowed to do that to anyone? We'll, we'll get, we'll get there. there. <laughs> <laughs> the regulation part. Yeah. So yes. um, small businesses need to be able to understand mm-hmm. what data they are mm-hmm. collecting yes. for them to be able to know what to protect. Yeah. That's true. Um, when we talk about the regulation that is there, the Data Protection Act, mm-hmm. it specifies you uh, that you need to do what we call um, data privacy impact assessment. Mm-hmm. The assessment is giving you an opportunity to evaluate your processes yes. to understand which data you're collecting, mm-hmm. um, how sensitive it is, because you have two two kind of categories of data that you can collect, mm-hmm. personal data and sensitive data. Mm-hmm. Most of the times, people will only talk about the sensitive data because it's the one that has a couple of um, implications. Yeah. But all the types of data that are, can identify a person, what we call personal identifiable information, yes. Yes. is needs to be protected. Yeah. So um, as an e-commerce um, uh, organization, mm-hmm. what you, once you do like a data privacy impact assessment, yeah. you can now come and uh, be able to establish the right measures on how to protect yes. that data. Yeah. So you'll come up with uh, things like... Um, Encryption, encryptions. You make sure you have SSL on mm-hmm. your on your on your um, domains. Yes. Um, you can do any any kind of security measures that you can imagine around tech. Mm-hmm. You don't have to go into the nitty gritties, but we can. You can do that. Yes. And then once you are done with that, you now um, set up even uh, a framework where you can be able to detect, as I was saying, yes. any intrusions. Or as you exchange data, let's say we wanted to work with a marketing company yes. to be able to market for us our services and say that, um, for instance, as Jumia, mm-hmm. we have this service, we have this offer, blah, blah, blah. So most of the times we'll contract another organization. Mm-hmm. And that brings in the essence of data sharing. Yeah. Yes. So remember, the subject that you collected data on does not, not know, know 
that well, you are you sharing a, this yeah, data someone with someone else. else to be able to enhance your own yeah. uh, business yes. business okay yes. Yes. so the 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 compliance issue now comes in at the point where we okay. want to be able to tell this business to make sure that they protect uh, you as um uh, a subject as a person who is interacting with this business yeah. to ensure that you do not have any adverse effects once that data is shared Yeah. And that's where now the Data Protection Act comes in yes. to enforce all the businesses to be able to um, adhere to the regulations that can protect mm-hmm. the data subject. Yeah. Yes. And and I feel like that's quite um it's the act came in in 2019, 2019 right? Yes. Yes, and f- before that I feel like probably these organizations didn't care as much about as long as they are doing things to like the marketing advance yeah to advance they don't care about our data as long as they are getting in the the customers and all that so it was quite relevant right yes it is very what relevant sh- what one, one thing say? that um mm-hmm. before maybe you go to that one mm-hmm. thing that you need to realize is that before the data protection act there were mm-hmm. acts Mm-hmm. I, I'm 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 not a legal consultant <laughs> here, but yes, yeah. there were there were acts or um, regulations mm-hmm. that tried to protect the consumers yes. before before then. So we had the consumer mm-hmm. little Privacy. known. Mm-hmm. Not not many people in terms of individuals would know that this is protecting them as a consumer yes. and uh, and trying to regulate what uh, these business organizations are doing yeah. uh, that would affect them. Yeah. So the Data Protection Act, uh, if you look at it has components plugged from consumer act mm. um the intellectual mm-hmm. act so there are a couple of acts that were there before mm-hmm. we implemented this data protection act and then yeah. of course the gdpr which yeah. was more global yes. yeah didn't have an effect on mm-hmm. us as yeah. much as it would have wanted to again just bring the essence of data, data protection for uh yeah. individuals yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I saw something the other day about how the GDPR is EU based mm. and sometimes it doesn't really yeah. very much um affect us or cannot be enforced here. Yeah. I can't yeah. use it as a basis of maybe suing an entity, an entity for yeah. for my own yeah. um data privacy um issues. Issues, <laughs> yeah. Breaches, yeah. Yes. Mm. So I w- I wanted to ask about um what would you say are the implications for example now of a company that is not aware of this or they are not really trying to work with the data too, yeah yes. so one of the things you need to know is that ignorance is no defense by law oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you cannot defend yourself. So I can't go and like I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah, so, uh, it is a business I didn't know that the uh, data protection act existed. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. and so with that it means that every business needs to adhere. Yes. And needs to be aware of it uh, whether they consult someone to do it for them mm-hmm. or they have an in-house um, resource to be able to do that. Yeah. Yes. Um so the implications of not uh, adhering to it are clearly stipulated by the office of data protection mm, they are yes. hefty yes yeah? yeah and and um uh, if an organization really wants to protect itself yes. from those kind of fines that have been put yeah. uh, they would want to comply That's and compliance true. means now they need to do things like um have the proper policies documentation mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. get um registered by the ODPC one yes. of the critical um things to do is that you need to be registered by the ODPC mm-hmm. as a data controller mm-hmm. or a data processor mm-hmm. and now you have the rights to do the things that are uh, outline what a processor can do mm-hmm. or a controller can do yeah so that will maybe encompass the data sharing yeah yeah external vendors external yeah. vendors then you have to now uh, say this is the limits of what i'm doing mm-hmm. uh, i'm only using this data so as you write uh, the policies that uh, you need to write as a processor or a controller yes. you'll need to define the boundaries of how you're using the data yes. yeah the data privacy impact assessment outlines all those things mm-hmm. so there's a format that they have given to be able to show um where you're using that data mm-hmm. so it's the limits the boundaries of how you are able to process it so that if um um someone will talk about and I'll, I'll bring about the concept of um consent mm-hmm. yes. so consent, if you yeah. agree that my data can be used as you maybe come to the website yes. then behind the scenes the organization is saying I can only use your data up to this part. Yes. And yeah. when you're consenting, mm-hmm. you have been outlined everything that that organization is doing so that you consent to what 
they are only doing. Yeah. If they do anything outside that, that's what we call a breach. Yes, yes. Oh, But now, still, yeah. <laughs> still on that, I think, <laughs> also for the people who don't read the terms. Yeah, I was and, to say that. <laughs> we, 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 honestly, we, we just agree. Ken, we don't take time to, <laughs> if, they are so long, so how do we even protect our ourselves yeah. against okay, ama you will tell us for example we read. For <laughs> well yeah you need to read <laughs> but um i think uh, what businesses are doing wrong is that they are doing um jargons mm-hmm. or really long stuff you to, touch at gpt yeah, yeah. please yeah. Yeah. and then they are not they are not publicly facing that someone can just look at it immediately and yeah. and then they put it in a place where maybe you wanted to access a service mm-hmm. yeah. and they are putting it there for you to just act accept it without so having a proper a time yeah, to exactly. so that you can submit something yeah, exactly you, you really have chance to say no because you need that service so yes. you just tick like agree, a nudge. agree exactly. terms like, and conditions exactly. it's like a nudge that you are being uh, kind of pushed without yes. your hey. yeah but yeah. um i feel like uh, even if that is happening mm-hmm. uh, if you can take time and read mm-hmm. you are at a better place to realize um what what you can do in case of Um, a breach, a breach. A breach. right because you'll true. understand their process mm-hmm. you'll understand um how you can even be able to kind of um pin them down that you only say that you can do this yeah you did uh, x and then and then, then there's <laughs> also someone else who is not directly in that process mm-hmm. for example i'm see i'm sure you've seen this kenyan um or all over the world there are these money lenders platforms yeah. right yeah. Mm-hmm. where you are the one who has borrowed the money and They, you've given them consent to your phone book. Yeah. yeah. Why are they calling me? Not even you. I didn't even call your cousins. They call people Anyone from in your, your phone book. book. <laughs> the, your call. So hey, you to pay know back the money. Otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that is one of the things that um, Data Protection Act is coming to curb. Yeah. Because um, that is not the 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 way this lending organization should act yes. if you have borrowed um uh, of your uh, some fund and you're not able to pay yeah. um your family does not need to know that you yeah. okay exactly. so your financial status Privacy. is private and as you're talking about the private information yes financial data is part of it yeah. it's private part of it. right mm-hmm. so telling someone else that that you uh, rona is not paid, yeah. um, <laughs> the kaleka five yeah. it, it it really tarnishes their name right really and, and the data protection office is uh, keen on that i think yes. one of the organization was actually uh, also fined because mm-hmm. of uh, that and uh, i hope that they'll be able to the rest will be able to comply yeah. and, and keep the data that they are collecting from the people they are lending safe. yeah, yeah. So I, I think I am curious on why mm-hmm. we took so much time given that now we have seen that data protection is such a relevant topic. Yeah. How come we took so much time <laughs> to come into it uh, I, as compared to let's say the the countries in the yeah. in the EU are better. So or, or do we say it's Africa or are there I mean why why now why, <laughs> why now? now why now um <laughs> tricky question but i imagine that um we lag behind mm-hmm. in 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 a couple of things in terms of um the innovations that are taking part in the world yeah. and uh we don't see the seriousness of these things <laughs> until maybe the impactors so i think this came about when we saw the elections being manipulated using yes. data and then that's when we realized that the cambridge data the analytic data analytic that access. exactly cambridge yeah. analytic our data could be used maliciously without us knowing yes. and then now we decide we, we started looking back and saying oh how do i protect this data how mm-hmm. do i get hold of the data that i had already shared yeah. okay. so we lag behind in terms of understanding the implications of the different things that could happen if yes. we share data and the other thing i think uh, the concept of um, data monetization mm-hmm. yes did not sync with um, most of mm. the africans yes. i would say yes yeah. until they saw the impact that someone can harvest these amounts of data mm-hmm. and sell it to someone else at yeah. x amount and then that's money even at an individual right. level exactly i mean who knew i can scan my head to get some <laughs> exactly you see that so data monetization had not sunk in, yes. the, in the minds of people and now it's when uh, people are realizing that oh 
this this as you're t- saying data is an asset for the business yes. mm-hmm. it's an asset in many ways yeah. yeah if i just come up with a website that is maybe doing this and that i collect this amount of data i yeah. have a target that i can sell to yeah i make money yeah oh. so it's a wake up call i think also <laughs> the the ethics of it though how do we then because at the end of the day we are living in a world where not everyone has good intentions and yep. all that mm-hmm. and you can give me all the template yeah. of this is how That's I'm going to yeah. use it yeah. and you're still going to misuse my data and yeah. monetize it without my consent and yeah. all that yeah. and a uh, good case is what was happening in the with the wild coin mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. wild coin oh. came around in and the remember other day that and bus, yeah. people the were money. Making, yes people are making some <laughs> long queues just to make yeah. some 7000 Kenyan shillings 7000 Kenyan shillings is like right now it's around 35 dollars yeah yes they're yeah. about they're and yeah. it was good money i mean if i get it i get full tank for my car <laughs> <laughs> and you've sold your soul and i've sold my soul <laughs> yeah there's that part unknowingly and so <laughs> the, the concept you've just introduced there is what we call data ethics yes mm-hmm. data ethics is another topic that we will take um an hour or two to discuss yes yeah. basically what that means is that you as a data practitioner as yes. you're using data mm-hmm. um are you able to adhere to ethics of mm-hmm. being able to protect the subject remember that as you are working with data there is a person behind it yes yes any point of data that you are working mm-hmm. or a mm-hmm. course that is really specific to ethics yes. so that as a practitioner you know that i have an obligation mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. protect the person that i'm manipulating this data yes yeah. yeah. yes remember the whistleblower of cambridge analytica yes so mm-hmm. it's just ethics that prompted him to now whistleblow yes. what was happening ah. others would have even kept going on i mean all these elections have been happening exactly mm-hmm. and remember that all these systems are being built by a person yeah. yes so whoever is doing the app um that is harvesting the contacts yes um, for that lender yes. is a person Yes. And they know that really that is not this the is way wrong, to go. If it's wrong, they know. But but because uh, maybe ethics is a gray area for mm-hmm, many people yeah. and maybe they have not been taught like this is wrong and this is right, yes. then they can do anything yes. and go 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 free with it. Yes. I, I I would imagine that we should be even pinning down the developer of um a particular Uh, yes because he's the one who implemented this and yeah. they have the right to tell the company that yes. as a developer this is against my ethics yes But i'm afraid to lo- wait i i, I want mm-hmm. to keep my job you know you want to keep your job. Job. <laughs> i am i am eating here. so imagine <laughs> like, <what? laughs> let, let me put it in this way uh yes. to make it more scary or a bit scary for yes. you yes. imagine you implement a health system mm-hmm. yes right that um is harvesting some data that yeah. is sensitive mm-hmm. and you as a patient uh, or your mother as a patient mm-hmm. comes in to use mm-hmm. that particular oh my uh, mother yes. system right <laughs> yeah you got paid to build mm-hmm. and you went away yes. five years uh, after you built yes. your mother comes in to use the same system so it's a ripple effect like it's a ripple whatever, effect yeah, so people like, need to understand that yeah. whatever i'm doing it will come back to me it uh, will if i true. don't take the um, right or the necessary um, mandate to control mm. yes the breach of data uh, the misuse of data mm-hmm. uh, and and everything that can uh, cause an adverse effect to people mm. yes then at the end of day one way or another mm-hmm. it will come, come back, back to me. okay i think as developers as people yeah. in the tech world that is that's what you need to understand that's true that's yeah. true yep. that's true Uh, and it also just speaks to your character how far are you willing to go <laughs> to let to <laughs> get <laughs> money to get money <laughs> you to pay the bills you know the economy <laughs> me panda do yeah. we need, we need to, <laughs> eh? to do what we have to do yeah. yes yeah. other yeah. than that we have talked a lot about the organization and I'm wondering yeah. so how are, how is me as rona yeah. how can i protect, protect myself yourself. am i first of all reading That's one. Well, that's one. <laughs> um I I like to put it as um a place of awareness for mm-hmm. people who want to mm-hmm. understand how to protect themselves. That's so you true. need to be aware as you yes. stay. Yes. Um so reading stuff that mm-hmm. uh, what is happening, um rulings that have been done mm-hmm. and understanding uh, what was the, the genesis in- of yes. the, the problem so that yeah. this ruling was done and all that. But uh we have this concept of um the digital um footprint that you live 
yes uh, online yeah. so my advice to anyone who is um using any digital platform yes. is to limit yeah. the the kind of footprint that they leave because the footprint involves any data that you're submitting on these platforms. Yes. Yeah. You're going to the site to register, do you ask for your ID number, you, for you put it, it there. Mm-hmm. The other one asks you for the date of birth, you give it, you ask where you, you live. for a bank where you live. So remember that if someone really wants to track you down, they can start collecting Very these easy. footprints That's that true. you have left in different places. And there are people with accuracy of... um one hour or 20 minutes can predict where in. can predict where oh you are goodness. at a particular point. point in a week that's, that's so true. creepy and i know <laughs> like I'm, I'm, able to, I'm able to say i'm able to say rona at uh, 10 pm oh my on tuesday akwanga ile mali yeah at 7 yes. yes. <laughs> yes. so that's the kind of um awareness that people need to have to yeah. understand that data they are living at different points of uh, the internet can mm-hmm. be can be used to adversely affect them that's true and once they do that if they start reducing their um, um digital footprints yes. that's a way to protect themselves yes. and then yeah. now the awareness of laws uh, regulations and mm, policies yeah. that protect them yes. give them the opportunity to stand and say i only gave you the right i consented to you to do this and that. Yes. Mm-hmm. I didn't allow you to transfer my data to um like the world world coin thing. Yes. I didn't allow you to transfer my data to um whatever German yes. Europe yeah. whatever place. I only allowed you to use that data internally and for these and these purposes. Yes. Yeah. But if you're not aware of that, how will you go you and stand a case that um this is misuse of my data? That's so true. your your first f- line of defense awareness. you as a person awareness. Yes. Yeah. And make yourself aware. This is such a nice conversation also get gets me thinking because I love social media I love the internet mm-hmm. and um, <laughs> it's making me start thinking about how what I've been sharing online and all that <laughs> say so, that again please, please. <laughs> um I know I've been fighting with Rona about this yeah. thing. that's why we are on this topic uh-huh. she's like don't post don't post don't, post. Uh-huh. don't say we are this <laughs> First after we've gotten home you know I'm this thing yeah, yeah yeah they don't listen they don't listen they tell me I'm paranoid it's <laughs> not about me to back me up today I I, <laughs> tot- I totally understand you and I'm backing you up on this because um imagine uh-huh. you um traveling yes and you've just posted that oh i'm leaving this and this mm-hmm. i'm gonna be mm-hmm. someone can estimate that strip here we come yeah. here we come can <laughs> estimate that we're gonna be at nakuru in the yes. next two hours yeah. yes. so before those two hours i can hijack you somewhere that's true at that's a true. very specific point where i know that you cannot yeah. be able to get help that's true so some things don't need to be really shared yeah, yeah. That's you true. can say once you get there oh yes Yeah. Nakuru here yeah, we yeah. come. Yeah. You know, I'm already yeah, was yeah. there or later just say that I visited Nakuru blah blah blah. That's true. Some mm. some way to be able to deter the kind of real time that can cause us to um have effects. Yeah. That's negative true. effects. Of. This is such a good point to just finalize on this episode and it's I'm inspired. I'm also educated. I'm inspired <laughs> and yeah, it has got me thinking about my own responsibility towards data mm. and also data awareness and also as a developer, as a techie and my what my contributions are yeah. with regards to the things I'm building in this industry. Mm. Yeah. So can even as we finalize give us your parting shots. Before before just before mm-hmm. just briefly tell us Ken mm. If I want to become a data protection, protection. Officer, yeah, okay. data protection what officer. What can I do to get the I really maybe, like what are the opportunities yeah. in this space? Ah, fantastic. Um the data protection officer is a a a, a term that was coined by the uh, law mm-hmm. that you're looking at the data protection act mm-hmm. and it's just an opportunity to have someone in the organization mm-hmm. uh being the contact point for saying that this is how you're protecting our data and in case anything happens around our mm-hmm. data he's the person that is able to do that yes. like do communications mm-hmm. uh, say what is happening but um what i would like to say in terms of opportunities that we have a lot of opportunities mm-hmm. on how you can um uh get into this space mm-hmm. yes data protection and the data protection officer by mm-hmm. say should uh, not just be a t- uh, business person or a techie person yes. but someone with the understanding of you s- you realize that it's about business it's about uh, law it's about tech yes uh. it's it's a 
like a sweet spot between the three yes. of them. Yeah. So you need to have all that information. Uh-huh. Anyone sitting in those areas can become a data protection officer. Yeah. But yes. specifically in tech, we have things that um, I imagine that we need to be doing right now mm-hmm. so that we can uh, be relevant yeah. as we try to comply with the Data Protection Act. Yeah. We have a concept that you are calling privacy by design. Yes. Yeah. So as you are building... Um, these apps that you are building yes. web apps uh, mobile apps we need to make privacy and mm-hmm. protection in that app yeah so sit back and ask yourself before i even start sharing this application to people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. how am i protecting yes those people yeah. as yeah. i build yeah Ooh. you get yes. yeah that's a field on its own that not many people have started venturing in mm-hmm. privacy wow. by design privacy yes. by design and then the second secondly what we call privacy enhancing technologies mm-hmm. okay so privacy enhancing technologies are coming in to help organizations that maybe do not want to hire a dpo mm-hmm. or go the full fledge of having um an in-house department dealing with data protection mm-hmm. um automate some of these things that's true we have different types of privacy uh, enhancing technologies yeah. so developers and people in the tech world now have an opportunity to plug mm-hmm. in here in a very open field yeah. to yeah. be pioneers of these privacy enhancing technologies privacy. that can be able to help small businesses yes maybe um, e-commerce shops people mm-hmm. who are having shops here in town and mm-hmm. all that yeah. that do not have the capacity to Hire, hire people, people do this the yes. data protection and all that yeah sure. so those are two fronts that i believe that could be um very opportune for people yeah. lastly yeah. as 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 a field wow. that people can be able to venture ah, in i sure. i remember i had this conversation when i actually came into mm-hmm. the organization that yes. um we are currently working in mm-hmm. yes. and i said that data pro- uh, privacy cyber security mm-hmm. is one of the hottest fields in yes. the industry mm-hmm. and we needed to have um a course on that yeah. yes and yes. i think people were like ah dude you are you sure what mm-hmm. you're talking about <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what is this what is this <laughs> you're saying and i specifically actually this was um a, a point that i had made in terms of uh, the business um narrative that i wanted to drive yes more ladies are mm-hmm. doing well in cyber security, cyber security. Uh-huh. Yeah, men. yeah that's true <laughs> And, and that was a statistic that I said that mm-hmm. people really wondered, Mbuki, what are you saying? I remember that presentation. Yes. You remember? Ah. Yes, I do. I do. I do. One year down the line, they are racing towards doing cyber yes. security. Yeah. And yes. we already have people trying to get into that. If we had tried to leverage on that immediately, then we'd be Good. a, Even a market leader. Anyhow, true. we hope that you'll be able to go ahead and still be a market leader in that front. But yeah. cyber security is a front that um, uh, is green and is, is is there for people to be able to join. Yeah. And, and they'll have the opportunity to interact with all these policies around protecting data, yes. uh, helping the organizations to be compliant and all that. Yeah. That's true. yeah. Thank you so much. Now I know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> you know where money is. I know In where the money next is. episode, <laughs> Rona will be talking about how she transitioned. <laughs> it, yeah. And thank yeah. you, Ken, for for coming here. And thank you for all this rich knowledge that you shared with us today. Mm. Please. Thank you and you're welcome back again. Because and I feel like there is a lot. A lot of things we haven't even touched. But yeah. We've only touched the tip of the iceberg. Yes, please. the very tip. Yes. So please to our listeners, if so far you've enjoyed this content, what are you waiting for? Share it with someone, subscribe, follow Raters also on other streaming platforms like Spotify, uh, Podcast Casts, and all these other streaming platforms where you get your post- podcast from. So please, Global Tech Sellers, we are bringing you all these conversations. And uh, thank you, Ken, for yeah. being here. Uh, Ken, where can 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 we, we find, find you? you? If I want you to be my mentor, you know, <laughs> I, I have gotten a vision, yes. and I was. <laughs> ish, <laughs> where ish, do I find ish. you? You can find me here <laughs> at uh, <laughs> Global Sailors <laughs> Podcast. Yes, uh, please. I'll be here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope they'll take me back. Uh, please, you know. of course, we'll bring you back. We okay. will. Yeah. Um, on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. you can find me. I mm-hmm. usually like to start with my professional page. Yes. Yeah. LinkedIn, Ken Buki. Mm-hmm. Um. Twitter, mm-hmm. there you can find me, mm-hmm. and and then if you don't find me any in any of those places, you can find me at my farm. Ah, wow. Wow. at the farm. Yes, <laughs> at the farm. Okay, the farm. okay. Yeah. So thank you. So Ken Buki on LinkedIn and Twitter. Yeah, yes. Ken Buki. Yeah. Awesome. Ken Buki.
noted that. <laughs> okay, thank you and bye-bye. Bye-bye.